You go. Thanks. Y'all give God some praise for Pastor Hayes. We can, if y'all don't mind, give me, give him a little bit more love. Give Pastor Pastor Hayes a wonderful. Thank y'all. And give God, give First Lady, give God some praise for First Lady, please. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Uh, I, I, I have, um, I have been coming here to Vegas for many years, and uh, we don't have a lot of church relationships. We operate based on relationships. It's not just based on bookings or based on opportunities. We operate on relationships. And when I spoke with Pastor Hayes when we were doing the the uh, the coat drive, the virtual coat drive, I realized that's a relationship. And, and as I remember, I remember I said that to Eunissa because of the way he and I communicate over the phone, you could sense his heart. He has a heart of a pastor. Every, not, not every pastor has the heart of a pastor. So, so and, and, that, and that's, what, that's what that connection was for me. So one more time, give God some praise for great leadership. And then if I can get you to do one more thing, uh, 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 over 31 years ago, I met a young lady on River Street in Savannah, Georgia, and didn't realize that we would spend the next 31 years and I believe the rest of our life together, praise God. And uh, so, y'all give God's praise my wife, Eunissa. 31 years, five kids, two states. Yeah, we, <laughs> we've been together for a long time. We done seen some stuff. So, and, and your message, faith, fear, and focus, sir. I, I texted her earlier. I said we in the right place. That we, I got. I, I, well, you were seeing a little bit. That's so powerful right there. I'm, I'm big. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm in this entertainment space and ministry space, and a lot of times folks don't realize the power of media. But I get into that in a little bit. But uh, I just want to, you know, first give God some praise for y'all. Give y'all, y'all give God some praise for yourself for being here this morning. I see. Uh, Thank you, ma'am. Oh, okay. Well, wow, okay. That's a big old difference right there. I didn't even realize it. See there? <laughs> she, she was like, yeah, there we go. <laughs> and thank you for the music ministry. Come on, give God's praise for the music ministry. I, I love I love music ministry. Yeah, cause I, for me, because I, see, I go in. I, see, I, I, I lose myself. I, I maintain my composure today. I lose myself. And then, yeah. then I came in and I saw some of my fraternity brothers, me and Pastor Hayes are part of the same fraternity. A lot of y'all don't know that. We're in the same fraternity. And I saw some more of my brothers here this morning. All my bald head brothers make some noise. Where my BHBs at? There we go. BHB, baby. We represent bald head brothers of America. <laughs> International, worldwide. <laughs> all ages, all shapes, all sizes, all colors. <laughs> I, see so, I see some more of y'all, you made a good decision. I see some others still yet holding on. You're holding on? <laughs> holding on to that hairline. <laughs> release it, release it. <laughs> I fought my hairline for a long time. I was walking the floor late at night, laying hands on my forehead. I'm like, I call you back in Jesus' name. I, I speak increase, increase, overflow, overflow, abundance, abundance, restoration. God said, just cut it off. <laughs> and I would have cut it off earlier, but my wife, she didn't want me to cut it. She was like, no, you got a big head. I said, I know. I know. She's like, don't do it, don't do it. And then one day, true story, one day I got her to admit to it. I said, please, just let me try it. She's like, okay, but if it doesn't work, go right back. I see you have my word. And, and, when, and when I shaved my head, I'm like, God, I told her what I said, but I ain't going back. This is it. <laughs> yeah, I, used, I used to use that black stuff. You know, they got some powder. You can spray your whole hairline back in. I used that for a long time. And see, I'm a master barber, so I could work that thing. I look, it looked good. The problem is you couldn't forget. You can't forget you got that black stuff in your head. You mess around and forget and laugh and like rub your head like. <laughs> now you don't rub black stuff all across your forehead. <laughs> <laughs> and her, her and I was at a dinner party one night, and I and I messed around and hit my head. She was like, "Walk out, walk out, go to the bathroom." Like, 
please, please be obedient, please. Please go to the bathroom, please, oh my God. Get your head, get your head. <laughs> I went to the bathroom, I had smudged black stuff all across my forehead. I'm like, my forehead looked like a booking sheet, just fingerprints. Just <laughs> I'm in another wonderful uh, category, age group, if you'll allow me to say. I'm in my 50s, y'all. I'm 52. Yeah. I mean, isn't this a good pocket of life to be in, the 50s? I love the 50s. Because 50s is like you older, but you still young. Like you know some stuff, you know what I'm saying? You, you, you might have made some mistakes in life, but you still got time and life to work it out, you know what I'm saying? I love the 50s, you know? Yeah. And, and the thing about the 50s is, is I'm comfortable with the word no. Yeah. When you're in your 30s and 40s, you, sometimes you don't want to say, you, you don't want to say no. But now I'm like, no. <laughs> Man, we ain't doing that. <laughs> Your body turn is different though when you get 50. Yeah, yeah. 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 That, you, I'm not saying, I'm not speaking anything, no I'm sickness, anything. I'm not, this is, you gotta manage your body differently. One of the biggest things is I gain weight differently. I lose weight differently. I got something I never had before. I got back fat. Anybody else got back fat? I ain't saying nothing. <laughs> she said, I ain't saying nothing. <laughs> back fat is evil because you don't see it. You look in the mirror like, oh, I'm straight. You don't realize your back look like a pack of hot dogs. <laughs> At the past, I didn't know. I was, in, I was in the road one weekend. I was in a hotel that had three mirrors. So this mirror hit that mirror, hit another mirror. I said, hey, who back is that? Is that what I look like from behind? Oh my God. <laughs> I called my wife and said, why didn't you tell my back look like that? She like, I thought you knew. That ain't just happened. <laughs> Your back been like that. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> Some of y'all, you look at me like you don't know about the back fat. Let me help you out. If you got to lift up the dry off, that's back fat. And if you're not careful, water will get trapped in the back fat. And then when you think like you finish drying, it'll wait a few minutes, they'll just roll down your legs. <laughs> you think something crawling on you, like, what is that? What's that? Something is crawling down my leg. What is that? It's like, that's nothing but some water in the back fence. You all right? <laughs> uh, I'm fighting something else that men get. Men get this, what women don't, it's called, it's, I call it gut booty. That's when your gut and your booty stick out equally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fight, That's a tough fight right there. <laughs> Something you, you, I'll get up one Sunday, you, you will put a suit on, like, oh, can't wear that no more. <laughs> also, fellas, move your neck every day, shoulder to shoulder, stretch it out. I don't know what it is, something men, we get this, women, y'all get this, I call it old man neck. It's, when you, it's like when you see somebody, you call their name, they gotta turn their whole body around. You're like, how you doing, sir? All right, now good to see you. <laughs> good to see you now, all right, all right. Good to see you. <laughs> me, I, I like you, I gotta take you everywhere with me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, man. It's, I, I always like to see who else is in the room. I call it my room check. I love, I, I, I just love this whole journey of life, aging, you know what I'm saying? So I like to do a room check to see who else is in the room. If you're 19 and under, make some noise. So clap if you're 19 and under. Young folks, there we go. And I see some others, be proud. You, y'all got, y'all young, you got the energy we wish we had, you know? Come on. If you're in your 20s, make some noise. Where the 20s at? 20s in the house. Yes, come on. And if you're 20 and you're still li living at home, you should really be making some noise, praise the Lord. Yes. We call that the overflow. <laughs> if you're in your 30s, 30s in the house, make some noise. Where the 30s at? 30s. Yes. 30s is interesting because in your 20s, you think you know everything. You get in your 30s, you realize, I didn't know nothing. <laughs> all of that. Where's all of that? <laughs> 
and this, this next category, this is when you really get in there, you, you, you figuring out some stuff. You, if you're in your 40s, make some noise. 40s in the house, where you at 40s? Yes. 40s is great, because that's when you really learn to appreciate sleep. When you're in your 40s, you realize sleep is your friend. <laughs> I, like, I, I love an unexpected nap. <laughs> You ever, you ever sit down and watch Netflix and you start looking for a movie and it's like 5 o'clock and you wake up, it's 11.30? <laughs> You're like, what time is it? God, did I sleep that long? It's dark outside. <laughs> 50s, this is my pocket. 50s in the house. Next and all, we're 50s. Yes. Come on. We got 50 looking good today. Because you got options now, you know? You, I, I love it. All right, my, I call this next category the AARP category. Right. <laughs> if you're in your 60s, make some noise. 60s in the house. Yes! 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 How the 60s got more energy than the 50s, the 40s, the 30s, the 20s? There you go, 60s. Y'all better represent. <laughs> Six is like, I'm going to show y'all. <laughs> Let's keep it going. Seven is in the house. Seven is in the house. All right, all right, all right. That's what I'm talking about. Come on, 70s. Now, I'm going to tell y'all some young people, if you need some money, call them 60s and 70s. They got it. Yeah, if, you, if you need $4,000 by Tuesday, call them 60s and 70s. They got extra money. Now they're gonna try to fool you, like, baby, I wish I could. I'm on a fixed income. <laughs> Your grandma got three thousand dollars in the refrigerator right now, <laughs> in a Tupperware container. <laughs> it's like, take that money out that refrigerator, let it thaw out before you count it. <laughs> <laughs> if you're in your 80s, make some noise. 80s in the house. All right, 80s at the house. Okay. <laughs> 80s like, tell Pastor Hayes we say hello. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I want to I wanna grow old and healthy. I, I want to be like, like, yeah, you know, I want to live long. Yeah. That's why, I, that's why I love seeing the energy from the 60s and 70s. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, like I want to grow, I want to I wanna be like 120, you know, and, and people be surprised when they see me. You know, I want to walk somebody like, oh my God, you still living? Oh my God, I did not know you were still alive. How old are you? <laughs> I, I, I want to be Jimmy Carter old. <laughs> Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy Carter is in the hospital on hospice right now. He's been in hospice for a year. <laughs> you don't go to hospice to stay here. <laughs> <laughs> you go to hospice to leave. Yeah. Jimmy like, yeah, I'm gonna be here for a while, so let's go ahead and bring my bags, let's check in for a moment. <laughs> I'm telling you, I've been married to y'all. I've been married uh, 29 years, and uh, best decision after Christ that I ever made. <laughs> best decision. Because, I mean, because I'm telling you, they, every, every man who got a good woman makes a noise. You got your good woman, all the fellas. <laughs> yes. I'm going to give some more of y'all the opportunity to clap a little bit louder. All the brothers who got a good woman, make some noise. All the, all the fellas, if, if you got a good woman, make some noise, fellas. Come on. There we go. <laughs> Pastor, I didn't want nobody to get in no trouble. <laughs> you ride home, your wife, like, next time he said you got a good woman, you better make some noise. <laughs> <laughs> ladies, you got a good man, make some noise. All the ladies. See, the ladies know how to do it. I see you, bro. You get there. You go. She, she's like, she's like, yes. She's like, yes. <laughs> I'm telling you, ain't nothing like knowing you married the right person. Amen. You have a flashback sometime of that person you almost married. Like, thank you, Jesus. Oh my God, that was close. <laughs> you ever get a phone request on Facebook for somebody you used to date, and they don't look nothing like they did when you used to date them? You click it through their page like, thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name, Father. Hey! Thank you, God. That was close. My son came in like, Daddy, why are you praising? I said, that could have been your mammy, boy.
God bless me with a great wife. I got the wife I need, you know? I learned stuff. You know, you've been, been married 29 years. First of all, let me say something right here. Let me just give y'all a big old huge just uh, uh, hand clap for the fan ministry. That, y'all understand how much this is blessing me. This is the. Isn't that crazy? This right here. I don't know who, what, what decision this was, what committee member. When well, y'all, somebody should be just frank. Oh my God. Yeah. I've been, I've been doing this 31 years. This is the first time we've ever had a fan on stage. That is from God. Right here. Hmm. We, need to put this in, we need to put this in the contract from now on. <laughs> a pulpit fan. <laughs> I'm like, this is so nice right here. This is cool and relaxed. Because you know, when I come off, when I finish, I'm usually sweating. I'm like, I ain't got to change my shirt today. Look at God. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just had to put, add that in right here. Okay. <laughs> Isn't it good though? Because when you're up here, yeah. yeah. And, and it's wide too. It's, it's, a, you know, it's like, oh. I'm sorry, I got, I got off. I lost myself past that part. <laughs> but no, I've been, you've been married now 29 years. And the thing of it is, is when you've been married for a while, you know, you become like a, a, a marriage veteran. You don't fall into all kind of traps. Every time I see somebody, if sometimes I see somebody and they're arguing over something, I say, yeah, see, that's, that's some new marriage stuff right there. <laughs> Once you get to a certain age, you know, you, you, yeah, you don't even argue about stuff like that. Sometimes my wife, she'll try to trap me in what I call a, a marriage sinkhole, you know. <laughs> she'll walk in the room, she's like, whose shoes are these? She know they my shoes. <laughs> she bought the shoes. <laughs> But she want me to say they my shoes, and then she can say, "Well, why are they in the middle of the floor?" I'm like, I'm not, I'm, I'm not gonna give you that. I'm not gonna give you that. <laughs> I, I learned something else, fellas. I don't have a lot of time, but I'm gonna tell you this right here. I always share this with brothers every, every time I'm in front of some men. I share this as much as I can. This this one tip, brothers. If you can appropriate this tip in your marriage, it'll revolutionize your marital life. This one tip has arguments down in my house, 42% over the past about five, six years. If you can master this, fellas, oh my God, it makes your life so much easier. Fellas, if you do something wrong and you know for sure, for sure that you're wrong, fellas, admit it real quick, Jesus. <laughs> This is, this, is, this is my wonderful tool. I just, when I mess up, I just admit it and move on. Oh my God, it has made life so much easier. Not too long ago, sis, I came, I came home and I did something I know my wife didn't like. I didn't even realize I did it. I came home and I messed around and left the garage open all night. I, 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 expect, I plan on going in the house, getting something to eat, and going back outside to get my laptop bag. But I came in the house and then sat down, so I watched TV, and then fell asleep, <laughs> woke, woke up, and then went upstairs and left the garage open all night. My wife, she woke up before I did, and when I heard her voice downstairs, I, I, it all came back to me. <laughs> She was downstairs in the kitchen, right off the kitchen, right in the, right in the garage. And when I heard her voice, I, as my wife, she can sometimes exaggerate. She was like, oh my God! Oh my God! Somebody left the garage open! Oh my God! Somebody could have killed us! A serial killer could have killed us! I'm like, an animal could have came in here! I'm like, they ain't gonna have thumbs. <laughs> but instead of me coming downstairs and defending myself, you know what I did, bro? I came downstairs and I used what I learned. I walked right up to her. I said, my bad, that's my fault. I did that, wasn't nobody else, it was me. I said, you told me about that before and I did it anyway. <laughs> you can guarantee that will not happen again. And walked off. <laughs> Argument over. Nothing else to say. I leaned into it. I took it on the chin. That's it. I learned this the hard way. A few years ago. Everybody say, a few years ago. My wife had a function. She told me to put it in my phone. She said, make sure you are here on this day. 
Don't, don't, don't be on the road. Don't take no meetings. You, you, I need you to be here on this day. She said, put it in your phone. I was disobedient. <laughs> the day of the function, I didn't, forgot because I didn't put it in my phone. I get to the house, nobody home. We have five children. Even the kids who don't live there, they're coming by the house. <laughs> Wasn't nobody home. The driveway empty. I'm like, oh. I pull up, hit the garage. She said, oh, anybody home? I said, oh. Now, I didn't take the cue. I got comfortable, went inside. I'm like, oh, I'm going to enjoy myself. This got, I got some time to myself. Oh, this is going to be good right here. So I, I went in the house, and I got changed my clothes. I started cooking stuff. And I'm like, I got, I'm doing stuff I know my wife don't like. I got all the TVs on in the house. <laughs> I got Netflix on in the bedroom, Hulu on in the family room. I got the local news on the TV in the kitchen. I'm enjoying myself. I'm just cooking. I'm sauteing up some vegetables and I'm about to drop some shrimp in there. And then my oldest daughter called. I picked up the phone as soon as I saw her. I said, hey, hey, D. She's like, Dad, where are you? I said, I'm at the house. She said, why? I said, why not? She said, remember mama thing? I said, oh, Jesus, 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 Jesus. God, okay, she told me to put it in my pocket. And, and, and I ran in the room and I, I grabbed the suit and I grabbed the shirt. Nothing matched. I couldn't find no socks that match. I just went without socks and I was ashy. And it just was just. It, 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 it was bad. And I just hopped in the car and I'm speeding across town. I'm driving across, praying in tongues the whole way. I'm a priest. God, I'm just, oh, please, oh, Jesus. And I'm speeding and I, I got, to, got to, the, to the facility where it was happening. And I was like, just God, just let, let me get a parking space up front. No parking spaces up for I had to park all the way down the block. Walk back up. I said, God, please just allow me to get in there before she gave gives her presentation. God said, nope, you're going to learn your lesson today. <laughs> I walked in there. She was at the podium. I said, oh, God. And then we met. We locked eyes. And every man know when his wife is mad with him. The rest of the room don't know she piping hot mad. But you know she is piping hot mad with you. It was one little look. I said, oh, this bad right here. I went and sat down, and my two daughters was right there. And one of them looked at me, gave me a little nasty look. I said, hey, hey, don't look at me like that. <laughs> but I, I sat down, and I was, I was a good cheerleader while she gave her, her speech and her presentation. And after I came off, I went up, and I tried to, tried to play it off. I, walked, I said, hey, baby, good job. I leaned in for a kiss, and she did something that showed me how bad it was. It was real subtle. Nobody else saw it, but I got it. I leaned in for a kiss. She turned her head and said, mm. I said, Jesus. I said, that's cold blood right there. I said, oh, I'm in trouble. <laughs> Whole night, she didn't say nothing to me. She talking to other people right next to me, didn't say nothing to me. <laughs> she rolled there with one of my kids. I don't even know which one, but she rolled back with me. She didn't say nothing the whole trip across town. I was trying to make small talk, nothing. Crickets. I pull up in the driveway and she did one thing that told me how bad it was. She did something she knew I don't like. She got out the car and she slammed the door. Bam! I said, I couldn't say nothing. She went in the house. I said, God, what I'm going to do? I said, God, I'm out here mighty bad. I said, this is mighty bad, God. I said, help me out. He said, go on in and admit what you did. I said, okay, okay, God, okay, okay. He said, but don't just admit it. Go in there and say it like she wants you to say it. I said, okay, I don't really understand. He said, go in there and give it to her. I said, okay, 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 all right, all right, all right. All right. So I got the car, I went in the house, and she was about to take her shoes off before she can get her shoe off her foot. I said, hold on, I need to get something off my chest. Who am I to disrespect you like that? Much stuff as you been through with me, and I got the nerve to show up late for your function. You tell me to put it in my phone, and I was this old bitch. Had the nerve to walk my bald head behind up in there late in front of all your friends, family members, co workers, and I'm up in there late. You can guarantee this will never happen again. <laughs> I just walked off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she was confused. She was like, well, don't be so hard on yourself. 
We all make mistakes sometimes, huh? Wow. I went in the room, I was like, God, that's what I'm doing all the time. I'm just going to admit it. <laughs> Not married brothers, don't do that too quick. Wait, wait a few weeks for you use that weapon. <laughs> <laughs> you try it now, she's like, ah, you gonna try that opportunity they mess on me. <laughs> I tell you this real quick, one of the other things that I'm real comfortable about is now you're getting older, you you like what you like, you don't like what you don't like. It is what it is. You work on yourself. I learned so, there's some stuff about myself that I definitely need to change. Because I'm a human being, and I'm living this human flesh. And, 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 this, and the Holy Spirit talks to me all the time. Holy Spirit, you ever, you ever, you ever say something or do something, Holy Spirit be like, you know you shouldn't have said that. <laughs> that was wrong. Before anybody can tell you, wrong. But some stuff is just who you are. It is what it is. That's okay. Like me, like, I don't like dogs. I don't. I never like dogs. And today, everybody loves dogs. Yeah, right. And I, and I don't like dogs. I, and I know it's some more people like me. All the dog people who don't like dogs. All, where are all the dog haters at? If you're a dog hater, make some noise. Yes. One, two, three. And it's some more, y'all, but you don't want to say it. I understand. <laughs> I don't like dogs. And, and I recognize, see, like, dog, everybody likes dogs, but... Like dogs are different now, you know? If you got a dog, give your dog a dog name. <laughs> a dog name should be Spot, Scruffy, Rex. You don't name a dog Keith. <laughs> I moved next door to a couple, they had a dog named Keith. And I'm hearing the wife talking to the dog. I'm thinking she's talking to her husband. I'm getting mad. She's like, come here, Keith. Pick that up, Keith. Good boy, Keith. Bad boy, Keith. I'm like, good God, brother. Stand up for yourself. <laughs> I told my wife, I said, man, she talked to him like a dog. <laughs> You got dog. Stop putting clothes on dogs. On, you got a rock wilder with a sweat on. <laughs> he mad. He like, hey, take this off me. I'm hot. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Drop the church mic. It's a, it's a good mic too. I don't know. Praise God. <laughs> and black dogs have gone to another level. And I don't mean black by fur color, I'm talking about black by owner color. <laughs> black people doing stuff for dogs, y'all never did. White people, Hispanic, Latinos, y'all been taking care of dogs for years. Black folks just started taking care of dogs 12 years ago. Black dogs going to the doctor now. Y'all don't understand. This, this is a milestone. Back in the day, black dogs knew not to get sick. Black dog will see another black dog sick, he like, hey, I don't know what you got, but you need to get rid of that. <laughs> you about to be dead, you understand? <laughs> it's not, that's not just black daddies. Back in the day, old school dads, they didn't take dogs to the doctor. Yeah, yeah, a vet was a struggling business back then. Yeah, back then, the dog gets sick, your dad put you in the, in the front of the truck, he put the dog in the back. <laughs> He drive y'all way outside of town. Y'all done drove way down the road. You in a part of the city you've never been in before. You get off on a, a dirt country road, pull down the road, and then pull off into the middle of a big old field. And he get out the truck, and then you get out the front of the truck, you don't even know what's about to happen. You and your dad walk around to the back of the truck, he let the tailgate down, he like, come on here, boy. He like, dad, what you about to do? He's like, look, be, be quiet, son. He's like, come on here, boy. Dog like, huh? Dog sick. He's like, huh? He's like, come on here, boy. Like, huh? What we doing? Like, come on here, boy. Dog like, huh? He said, like, finally, dog get up and he kind of wobbly because he's sick. He's like, go get. Dog like, huh? Go get. Huh? Go get. Dog run off in the woods. Then you and your dad get in the truck and pull off. He's like, dang, where are we going? So my son, son, 
He'd been a good dog to us for six years. He about to die. A good dog ain't got no business dying in a neighborhood. So we released him to the wild. To die here in the wild with his own kind. And you, and you sad and upset because the dog is about to die. But you feel good because your dad told you he's going to die here in the wild with his own kind. You tell all your friends he's going to die in the wild with his own kind. Two weeks later, the dog showed up back to the house. <laughs> Just walk up and be like, hey, why y'all left me out there like that? It took me two weeks to get back over here. Them dogs would make it home without no map, no GPS. <laughs> they can't read. They just made it home. <laughs> I'm about to leave y'all, but let me share this with you. <laughs> um, first of all, you guys, and I'm not just saying this, you guys have an amazing church. Give God some praise. For a phenomenal local church body. Come on, family. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful sanctuary. I love what y'all have done with this space. Pastor, you're going to see some of this when we get our new studio. So praise God. Just know that when you come see him. Like, he told me he was going to do it. And I show him. This is very nice. I love what y'all did. This is very nice. And I just appreciate people who come together and good people who, who are just seeking God. We all live in our life experiences. We all have challenges. We all going through stuff. We all make mistakes. But this is the place off the time you can get a good word today and how to have fear how to, or faith and what you focus on. When you said that, I I said, Jesus, because sometimes for me, if I'm honest with you, I, I struggle with my focus because it's so much stuff that goes on. It's so much stuff in life that is designed to confuse you. And for me, I recognize one of the, 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 the reasons for myself, the challenge is because I have a mantle of ministry through media. Media is one of those seven mountains we were talking about. And, and one of those mountains is media. And folks don't realize if you control the media, oftentimes you control the messaging. If you control the messaging, you sometimes can, most of the times, can't you control the way people think? People don't realize is that, that we're not in a, we're not in any other battle. Whatever battle that this world tries to tell you it is, we're in a cultural battle. And the culture is Christian godly culture versus world culture. And, it, and I don't care what, everything else you can put into that pot, anything other category, if it does not line up with Christianity and the word of God, then that is the world's culture, which is by itself demonic. So the, so the world system is designed to take us focus off God. Get, designed to get us off. And it's designed to trick us. Designed to confuse us. And if it ever gets you to take fear onto your heart, you'll fear something that you already got victory over. When you say, I, I was like, boy, I said, that, when I said we're in the right place, that's why we're in the right place. Because, see, we, they, they, we have shared spirits. The Holy Spirit is, is talking, saying the same thing. And the trick is today, the trick is today is to confuse you. Whether it's political, whether it's entertainment, media, all it is designed to poison your spirit and make you doubt the power of God. Doubt the power of God. I, my mantle is, is, is media. I'm a screenwriter. I'm a producer. And I'm a director. And I'm, I'm in the process right now where I'm transitioning. I know my comedy plane is landing. God had not released me to retire, but I know I'm circling the landing space. Because it's not about what I want to do. It's about what God has given me to do. And I recognize that uh, particularly our children are under fierce attack. Yes, yes, yes. Us older folks, see, we've seen it. We understand the Internet age. We understand when TV came about and really began to soar. We understand the hip hop era and the, the, the hard rock era. We've seen different periods in time. But our young people are inundated with just negative images, negative sounds. And if you have a phone, a tablet, a laptop, and a TV, you're getting it from all directions. Grown folks, too. And if you ever think you're not affected by culture, think about some of the things you say. Yeah, if you say something like, you use words like, hey, let's give everybody a shout out. You got that from culture. <laughs> If you say people are hating on me, you got that from culture. <laughs> if you talk with your hands, like, uh, uh, that's culture. <laughs> that's culture. Cultural affects culture. Culture affects us. And we have to be aware of that. 
So, I, my, so my encouragement to you all is to one, be aware of culture. See, that's culture right there. See? <laughs> but be aware of how the enemy moves through culture. Begin to sift what you consume in the form of media. When you're watching something, ask, ask your spirit, Lord, how you feel about this? Guess what? I'm not saying you can't watch an action movie or, 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 or a horror movie. I personally don't do horror movies. I don't, I don't play around with, with, with demons and spirits. I'm like, the devil is alive. <laughs> <laughs> I used to watch I used to watch horror movies and all that stuff and I'm like mm, no. <laughs> you see some of that stuff you know little girl just come and stand on the floor and turn her whole head around the devil is alive I'm like I'm about to watch that and go to sleep <laughs> but, you know but, but, but see, but see the thing of it is, is if you always are taking in darkness if everything is is demons and everything is always zombies and everything is is darkness what it does is it trains your spirit, your spirit no better, but it trains your soul to not be able to process and differentiate between what's right and, and true and what's wrong and a lie. So be careful of that and then pray for folks like myself who have a, who, who have a, um, a resolve and a mandate to represent Christ through media, arts, and entertainment. I'm determined. I will never do anything in a film on a TV show that Pastor Hayes got to come up and explain. He's not, he, he not going to say, well, I know you saw Brother Aki Tune on TV the other night. Well, you know, I hadn't talked to him, but I'm sure he's got a good reason. Or I, that, or that was, let me tell you this, that was the devil. No, not, because first of all, I'm accountable to men and women of God. I'm accountable to the church, local church body. That's something that sometimes entertainers forget. So let me say this to you. I'm going to share this share with, with you. Um, thank you, man. Y'all give my, my wife a big, huge round of applause. Thank you, too. And um, I'm going to share something with you. This is, this is a, a, um, this is a uh, poster that we offer while we're on the road. Please forgive us. We don't have our big backdrop and all the stuff we normally have is because we came to Vegas, we buy, our, buy ourselves for the Stella Awards. They don't fly all of our team. But I have these posters. This is, let me tell you, tell you why. This is the most, the highest selling uh, 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 piece of product that we've ever had. And the reason why is because of the message behind it. Pastor Hayes, you said something earlier. We were talking, you said, I, you said, you came to Vegas, for the a, a basketball tournament, and you were talking. He was talking about how you said it, you kind of jokingly said, you, "I could, I wouldn't mind living here based on how nice the the YMCA was, which is very nice for a YMCA." I might add. But you said something, and then it materialized. And the truth of the matter is, a lot of times in the body, we don't recognize how powerful our mouths are. We sometimes throw our words around. A lady said to me, this to me last night, she said, oh my God, you were so funny. You had me dying laughing. I mean, no, no, you weren't dying laughing. <laughs> You're not going to die laughing. <laughs> no, you know, people say all the time, oh, you're killing me, you're killing me. No, I'm not killing you. I'm not killing you. I'm not killing you. And then, guess what? You might say, well, that's not a big deal. Well, it is a big deal. Because your spirit man should be able to respond. The spirit realm should be able to respond when we say things. And if we ever recognize the power of our words, we would appropriate them so much more differently. Do, do I fail at it? Of course I do. You get angry sometimes, you say something, sometimes you speak tough stuff to a loved one that you should have never said. And then you have to go back and take it back. But if we use our words, recognizing the power they have, you will see a whole different outcome of your life. I believe. This is our, our, our post here is, it says, I believe God, no matter what, no matter what's happening, I know what's up. I say this all the time. My son told me, he said, Dad, you should do a t-shirt on that. I said, oh, okay. And the t-shirts are coming. I said, well, just do me a poster. He said, okay. So he designed me this poster. And I, because I say it all the time, right, around our office, around the house, I believe God, no matter what, no matter what's happening, I know what's up. That means no matter what happens politically, some of y'all check your phone a little bit if you hadn't already seen it. And see stuff is still changing very quickly. No matter, but no matter what happens in that, Psalms 91, baby, I believe God, no matter what, no matter what's happening, I know what's up. I don't care what happened out there. So I, my challenge is to you is to, to take this, take your words, and then do what I've done. 
take this poster, the only $7, write on the back of this what you believe in God for. Put, take some bullet points. Whatever you believe in God for in your health, whatever you believe in God for in your family, whatever you believe in God for mentally, whatever you believe in God for in your marriage, whatever you believe in God for for the marriage that you want to come, whatever you believe in God for in your career, write it down as a reference and then speak it out of your mouth. Speak it. Dare yourself to speak it and speak it consistently. It might take you two or three times a day to speak because sometimes, guess what? It's not, not this is some type of a ritual. This ain't nothing demonic or the world has tried to pervert this stuff. This is a kingdom principle. This is a kingdom principle. This ain't no universalist pr principle. This is God, Christ. Speak those things out of your mouth that you believe. And I'll leave you with this to prove the point. I could give you several example but this one is is, is is extremely powerful powerful to me and it's one that you can easily go research several artists over the years has spoken their death to existence several go back and research it the uh, famous rocker Co Kurt Cobain said he probably wanted to be 27 took to be 28 he died at 27 Jimi Hendrix said he probably wouldn't see 28 he died at 27 Dr. Martin Luther King said I probably won't see 40 he died at 39. You know, somebody might say, well, maybe you could just sense it. Let me, this is what I believe. If you feel something negative about yourself, don't speak that. Speak against that. Many times that's the Spirit, the Holy Spirit telling you something that's happening, that that's rumbling, or how the enemy is moving, and speak against that thing in your life. Perfect example of this, the rapper Notorious B.I.G. Now I'm an old school hip hop head. I'm a 70s baby, I grew up in the 80s, I became a man in the 90s. I used to love hip hop music. And the no Notorious B.I.G., he was my guy out of the East Coast, West Coast rivalry of the 90s. A lot of, a lot of men in hip hop can attest to this. Well, Notorious B.I.G. spoke his life, his death, in detail. To, to scary, pristine accuracy. The name of his first album was called I'm Ready to Die. That was his first album, I'm Ready to Die. And every song on the album was about death, violence, sex, or drugs, every song. At the end of the album, he had a skit, an outro, and on that outro, anybody who remembers that album, he died on the, on the album. He literally had the sound of a heartbeat. Boom, 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 boom. And then a flat line. And it went off. Nothing else, no context, nothing else. What happens? The album comes out, sells 10 million copies. Becomes a huge hit. Before the second album comes out, he dies. He shot and killed in Los Angeles. The name of the second album was called Life After Death. The album came out 30 days after he died. On the cover of the album, he is him wearing an undertaker's uniform next to a hearse. On the license plate on the hearse, it says Notorious B.I.G. He died in Los Angeles on the album. He had a song called, the lead single was, I'm going, going back, back to Cali. And in the song, he was talking about the violence, the, the, the East Coast, West Coast beef, and even his concern about being killed in Los Angeles. He died in Los Angeles on the Sunset Strip. He spoke death to himself. Can we speak life to ourselves? Yeah. Yeah. Can't we speak life to ourselves? So I just ask you to pray for my wife and I as we go through our journey of producing content that edifies God. And I just ask you to speak life to yourself and take one of these posters home and uh, 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 see what you're believing God for in your life to come to pass and make sure you have <laughs> no fear, but have faith and focus on that faith. Thank you all so much. I'm out to Tuesday. Thank you, Pastor Hayes. Thank you, First Lady. Family in Georgia. Peace. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I love you so much. Oh, God. Thank you so much. Wow, wow, wow. What a word. What a word. 
Man. You know it's a good day at church where you can laugh your butt off and still walk out and be like, man, he just tore it up. Hey, he asked us to do something, babe. Will you join me up here? Yep. Real quick. Um, real quick, real quick. Uh, Yanissa and, 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 and I continue, would you join us up on the platform? He asked us to pray for him. Can we do that? I want to make sure that we do that. This is his lovely wife. I've been communicating with her most of the... So uh, he asked us to pray, and, and he's obviously got a, a, a great mission field that God has called him to. And uh, so will you guys just extend your hand? We just want to uh, just pray a blessing over them. Lord, we just thank you. Lord, we thank you for this wonderful family. Lord, we thank you for the ministry, for the mountain that you've called them to. Lord, I thank you that you have given them strategy, you have given them uh, insight, you've given them wisdom, mm -hmm. and you've given them protection. Mm -hmm. Lord, I pray protection over their family. I pray protection over their ministry. I pray protection over their, over their character. I just pray protection, Lord, that you would watch their back, their front, their sides. And I thank you that this would be a year of increased favor. Hallelujah. of increased influence. Hallelujah. I pray that you would open up doors that no man can close. Mm, I God. pray that even now, mm. people who thought they said no mm. are going to say yes. Hallelujah. I pray glory that God. Uh, doors that thought were closed mm. would be open. Hallelujah. And I thank you, Lord, that once the river begins to flow, mm. that I can today mm. will say, Lord, that's enough. Mm. <laughs> I thank you, Lord. We release this word. We speak life. We speak health. We speak peace. We speak joy. We speak restoration. We speak life over them and life more abundantly. In Jesus' name. Jesus name. Amen. 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 Thank you, sir.